The Apollo program was NASA's ambitious effort to land humans on the moon and bring them back safely to Earth. It was born out of the tense space race between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War era. Meant to be the first crewed mission of the Apollo program. The goal of Apollo 1 was to test the command module on the ground. However, tragedy struck during a launch rehearsal when a fire broke out inside the spacecraft, taking the lives of astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. The three astronauts were overcome by toxic smoke and searing heat within minutes. This devastating event shook NASA to its core. An investigation revealed a dangerous mix of design flaws, poor workmanship, and an overconfident attitude towards safety protocols had created a volatile situation inside the command module. While the Apollo 1 tragedy was a devastating setback, it ultimately improved the safety of the entire Apollo program. The lessons learned from this disaster likely prevented future catastrophes and helped pave the way for the successful lunar landing missions to come. With lessons learned from Apollo 1, NASA pressed forward. Apollo 7 became the first crewed Apollo mission. Its primary goals were to test the redesigned Apollo Command Module in Earth orbit and evaluate the crew's ability to operate the spacecraft over an extended period. However, the mission was not without its challenges. The crew endured several technical issues, including problems with the spacecraft's attitude control thrusters, navigation systems, and a clogged waste disposal system. Astronauts Wally Shira, Don Isola, and Walter Cunningham spent nearly 11 days in space, proving the spacecraft's systems were ready for lunar flights. Their success marked a crucial step towards achieving the dream of reaching the moon. Apollo 7 played a vital role in resurrecting the Apollo program after the devastating setback of the Apollo 1 fire. Just months after Apollo 7, Apollo 8 represented a daring leap for NASA and the entire Apollo program. With its goal of orbiting the moon for the first time with a human crew, it was a critical stepping stone towards the ultimate prize of a crewed lunar landing. Astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders became the first humans to orbit another celestial body, providing breathtaking images of the Earth rising above the lunar surface. Their live television broadcasts capturing an Earth rise over the barren lunar surface became some of the most iconic images of the 20th century. However, the mission was far more than just picturesque views. It served as a crucial test of the systems and procedures required for future lunar missions. Tense moments arose when the crew had to perform a crucial engine burn to escape the moon's gravitational pull and begin their return to Earth. But Lovell's skilled piloting ensured a successful departure from lunar orbit. The mission not only tested crucial systems, but also captured the world's imagination with the possibility of lunar exploration. As preparations for a lunar landing intensified, Apollo 9's primary objectives were to evaluate the lunar module systems, propulsion, and the capabilities in space, as well as conduct the first crewed flight and spacewalk. One of the mission's most iconic moments occurred on March 7th, when Schweikart exited the lunar module for a 37-minute spacewalk. The spacewalk hit a snag when Schweikart became severely overheated and nauseated while exerting himself, making it difficult for him to return to the cabin. Only McDivitt's calm guidance enabled him to make it back safely before his condition worsened. Ultimately, after 10 days in space, the mission was a resounding success, effectively a dress rehearsal for the upcoming moon landing. Apollo 10 served as the crucial dress rehearsal, a full-scale simulation of all the operations and procedures required except for the actual surface landing itself. Astronauts Tom Stafford, John Young, and Gene Cernan piloted the lunar module to within just 8.4 miles of the lunar surface closer than any human spacecraft had ever ventured. The exercise allowed the crew to experience the entire landing sequence, calibrating the lunar module systems and targeting. The Apollo 10 represented an unqualified success and a critical step forward. Not only had it thoroughly simulated the conditions for a landing, but its color photography of the lunar surface guided the selection of future landing sites. NASA now had the confidence to attempt humanity's first footsteps on another celestial body. Apollo 11 was the mission that captured the world's attention and imagination like nothing before. Launched on July 16, 1969, with the goal of landing the first humans on the moon. 
Astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin detached the fragile lunar module from the command module piloted by Michael Collins. Armstrong opened the hatch and began his descent down the nine-rung ladder, uttering the immortal words to a global TV audience. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Aldrin soon followed, becoming the second human to walk on the lunar surface. For the next two hours, the two astronauts planted the American flag, conducted scientific experiments including collecting soil and rock samples, snapped iconic photographs, and Aldrin even took communion on the lunar surface. Finally, after a journey of eight days and nearly one million miles traveled, the Apollo 11 crew safely parachuted down and splashed in the Pacific Ocean. Their incredible voyage marked one of the greatest technical achievements in human history and fulfilled President Kennedy's ambitious goal, proposed in 1961, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth before the end of the decade. On November 19th, astronauts Pete Conrad, Alan Bean, and Richard Gordon achieved a precise landing, near achieved a pinpoint landing just 600 feet from the Surveyor 3 robotic probe, which had landed on the moon's ocean of storms two and a half years earlier. This allowed them to retrieve components from Surveyor 3 to study the effects of long-term exposure to the harsh lunar environment. Over the next couple of days, Conrad and Bean conducted two excursions on the lunar surface, totaling nearly eight hours of exploration time. Their activities included deploying scientific instruments, collecting rock and soil samples, setting up nuclear generators, and photographing and studying the barren moonscape. The mission achieved all its objectives, retrieving a total of 75 pounds of lunar samples and providing insights into lunar geology and the moon's composition. Perhaps most importantly, Apollo 12 confirmed NASA's newly developed precision landing capabilities a skill critical for accessing and studying specific sites of scientific interest on future missions. Apollo 13 was supposed to be NASA's third crewed landing on the lunar surface, following in the footsteps of the successful missions of Apollo 11 and 12. Instead, it became a survival story. An oxygen tank explosion led to a rapid loss of electrical power, venting of oxygen into space, and damage to key components of the spacecraft's propulsion and life support systems, forcing astronauts Jim Lovell, Jack Swigert, and Fred Hayes to abort their lunar landing and fight for their lives. In a desperate bid for survival, the astronauts scrambled to shut down the command module and take refuge in the tiny lunar module, using its systems to generate essential oxygen and battery power. The crew's cool-headed composure and their relay of the famous phrase, uh, you're coming out of signaled their precarious state. Brilliant improvisations by the crew and NASA engineers on the ground like using plastic bags, socks, and other materials helped avert catastrophe. Though not achieving its lunar landing goals, Apollo 13 became an epic story of heroism, ingenuity, and NASA's dedication in the face of a life and death crisis. It highlighted the dangers of human space exploration. After the dramatic survival story of Apollo 13, NASA aimed to get the crewed lunar exploration program back on track with Apollo 14. The goals were to land in the Fra Mauro Highlands and conduct extensive geological studies and experiments. On February 5th, astronauts Alan Shepard, Edgar Mitchell, and Stuart Rusa undocked the lunar module and touched down in the ancient Fra Mauro Highlands region. Over the next 33 hours, the astronauts conducted two lunar surface extravehicular activities, totaling nine hours and 24 minutes, setting a record at the time on the lunar surface. Their objectives included comprehensive geological surveys, experiments, and the collection of an impressive 94 pounds of rock and soil samples. The nearly 10-day mission was declared a resounding success, both in accomplishing its extensive scientific objectives and restoring confidence in NASA's lunar operations after the aborted previous mission. Apollo 15 marked a significant milestone in lunar exploration with the introduction of the lunar rover. Astronauts David Scott, James Irwin, and Alfred Worden utilized a revolutionary battery-powered dune buggy that exponentially increased their exploration range compared to previous missions where the astronauts were limited by how far they could walk. Over the course of three separate extravehicular activities spanning nearly 19 hours on the lunar surface, Scott and Irwin put the lunar rover through its paces, 
setting distance records by traveling up to 4.7 miles from the lunar module. In the end, Apollo 15 set several records, including the maximum duration for a single lunar surface excursion at just under seven hours, as well as the largest number of lunar samples collected at 170 pounds. The successful deployment of the lunar rover fundamentally transformed how future astronauts could explore the lunar surface. It ushered in a new era of mobile geology and allowed the collection of far more samples and data than ever before over much wider areas. Apollo 16 aimed to explore the Descartes Highlands and unravel more of the moon's mysteries. Astronauts John Young, Charles Duke, and Thomas Mattingly conducted a record three lunar surface excursions, collecting over 200 pounds of lunar samples and providing evidence of the moon's dynamic geologic past. Some of the key scientific objectives included conducting soil mechanics experiments, deploying instruments to measure the moon's magnetic field and seismic activity, and of course, collecting a variety of rock and soil samples from different sites. The 212 pounds of lunar samples and reams of data collected contributed immensely to our understanding of the moon's geology, composition, and bombardment history from meteorites and other impacts. The mission also demonstrated techniques that paved the way for future long-duration lunar exploration. Apollo 17 holds the distinction of being the last time humans traveled to and walked on the lunar surface, at least for the 20th century. Astronauts Eugene Cernan, Harrison Schmidt, and Ronald Evans explored the Taurus Litro Valley. This geologically diverse site contained both mountainous highlands and flood basalt plains, allowing access to study both kinds of lunar terrain. They collected a record 243 pounds of carefully chosen lunar samples from a wider variety of sites and rock types than any previous mission. Many of the rocks they retrieved are still being studied today. The mission was not without its dramas. At one point, the lunar rover navigation system briefly failed, temporarily disorienting the astronauts on the hazardous lunar terrain. Apollo 17 left behind not only flags, footprints, and spacecraft components, but a suite of active science experiments that continued relaying data for years. 24 Apollo astronauts visited the moon, and 12 of them walked on its surface. Additional NASA astronauts are scheduled to return to the moon by 2025 as part of the Artemis space program.